Call this meeting to order. Please silence your cell phone so we can conduct our business. Stand for the invocation given by Council Member. Thank you, Council President. Please join me in our, our Father. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. The allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you've all received a copy of the 2021 financials. Any questions or concerns on those? Bob? And uh, page six under enterprise funds and then city center fund revenue and uh, looks like a loss of $16,259. On the first set or second set, Bob? On page six. Um, first set. First set. Thank you. So we budgeted two hundred and six thousand, and that would be the mainly the merchants' fees that come in for that fund. And the amount we've collected thus far is one hundred and ten thousand. Um, no, that was month to date, so year to date. So it's actually an overage um, of collections. So I'll have to look into exactly why. Okay. Yep. So it's uh, one hundred and eight percent. Which means an in revenue collection. Okay, so you I have to look into So what you're saying is it. we've collected more than we budgeted? Correct. Okay. Yep. Any other? Go ahead. Um, Rachel, on the uh, uh, monthly council financial report, the revenues were down 64%. Is that because the taxes, the property taxes, it isn't the school taxes? Um, so I want to just direct you to the next set of financials where it breaks out the revenues a little bit more. We haven't collected two, three sales tax payments yet for the year, and that'll make a large difference in our revenue. So if you look on the Council Monthly Financial Report 2, and it starts on page one of eight, you can start to see the breakdown of revenues that have come in. And the line for sales tax. The third line down on that, if everyone can see that. Mm -hmm. um, year to date, we've collected 2.18 million. Um, and we'll have three more collections of sales tax coming in. So that'll change that revenue figure drastically. And other revenues come in throughout the year, though the property taxes, both payments were due. Um, and we'll have numbers next time we come back to council. Heidi cal calculates those to see where we're at in terms of payments. But as of the first payment, we were doing relatively well as compared to other years. I noticed that VLTs uh, from Batavia Downs uh, Came in, have they come into the city yet? So the VLT payment is actually a state aid payment. It right. doesn't actually come from Batavia Downs. It is a state revenue source, and that has been received. And how much was that? 440000 Thank you. Anything else? Okay, so we all in consensus to approve those financials then? Yes. Okay, those are approved. You've received the September 2021 minutes. Any corrections or omissions or concerns? So we're in consensus to approve those minutes. The agenda items. We'll start with 68-2021, the uh, transferring funds from assigned fund balance to the reserves. 
Mr. Canale. 69, 2021, the uh, capital projects transfer. Mr. McGinnis. 70, 2021, the um, wastewater and capacity analysis. Mr. McGinnis. 71, 2021, the um, engineering services proposal. Mr. Bajkowski. 72, 2021, the main sewer camera, Mr. Vealy. 73, 2021, the meter reading equipment, Ms. Pacino. 74, 2021, the repairs for the ice rink compressor, Ms. Briggs. 75, 2021, the street light changes, Mr. Carras. 76, 2021, the fund balance policy correction, or no, resolution authorizing the fund balance policy. That's the correction, right? The, the typo will fix. Mr. Bajakowski. And 77, 2021, the um, Northern Border Regional Commission um, grant agreement for the water reserve funds, local match. Mr. Vealy. All right. Communications? They submitted their application for Christmas in the City on Saturday, December 4th from 2 to 6 p.m. That would be on Jackson School and Center Streets. And then the parade is 6 to 645 on Main Street from Jefferson to Summit. There will be treats and activities in the downtown shops, horse and buggy rides, and train rides along with the parade. And there was... Um somewhat of a cost for that. I assume they're understanding they're picking up their cost, right? That is usually part of the city's budget is covers Memorial Day Parade and uh, Christmas, Christmas in the city, all right. Bob? Yeah, I have a question. Why uh, the public works cost is $2,062.86. It seems a little high. There's a detailed expense sheet I can provide that to you. Um, they break down the All right, thank you. Any other questions on that? Okay. The next uh, City Council Conference meeting will be held on Monday, October 25th, 7 p.m., City Hall Council Boardroom, second floor, City Center. City Attorney's Report. Yes, uh, Council President, members of Council. Um, since we reported on last, we have continued to work on a variety of matters across the spectrum, ranging from general municipal matters where we provided counsel to departments and department heads in the manager's office. We've worked on a variety of real estate and development matters. We've worked on code enforcement. Uh, we've worked on a variety of other uh, litigation-related projects as well. Uh, but at this point, there's nothing specific to report on. So, thank you. Okay. Um, and but, just in case you noticed, the, the, the proclamation is going to take place on next meeting if you think I skipped it it wasn't in, it was intentional I've been told that that's been that's been canceled for tonight people couldn't make it so we're gonna do it at the next meeting okay yeah I believe the city manager had to step out for a moment yeah so. I saw that we can uh, go to committee reports and come back to that any committee reports go ahead oh, I have a lovely one we now have four car charging stations two at TF Browns and two at the Generation Center which if you don't know where it is is across the street from Adam Miller toys and they've already been tested out with a car that National Grid sent, and the ribbons have been cut, and they are in use. Um, there are 41 scarecrows up and down Main Street. They're asking us all to vote on the one we like because the businesses that put them up get actual monetary prizes for them. The holiday lights and banners are here, and you've already heard about Christmas in the city going on. Um, one very quick thing, because we do put money periodically into Go Art. Uh, Go Art has suddenly blossomed and is starting its salon series again, which is a, a series of workshops. And the Garth Fagan Dance Company, if any of you know about it, will be here October 23rd for an actual dance studio and, and things like that going on. So they're just charging up and getting going down there. Aren't they having uh, an event coming up, a golf ball drop or something? Oh, they do indeed. Uh, 
they they take a helicopter over Terry Hills and drop golf balls all over Terry Hills, and as your golf ball comes the nearest to the assigned hole, you get two thousand dollars because we sell dozens and dozens of golf balls, which of course if you need, I'm right here selling them. Um, it's a marvelous fundraiser. It's, this is the second year that they've done it, and it really sells well. It's coming up, I think, in a uh, week. October 16th. I knew it was coming up soon. Anyone else? Any other committees? Okay. Um, she's not back, so I guess we'll go into public comments. We can circle back to that. Public comments? All speakers should have signed up in advance with the city clerk. Each speaker will please use the podium. Please state your name and address before beginning your statement. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. Please address your comments to the chair. Council will not engage in debate with the speaker. Um, if you hear your uh, bell, that means you have 30 seconds left. And on the second bell, I'm going to stop you from talking so that everyone gets a chance. John Roach. John Roach, Grandview Terrace. Certainly not going to be as interesting as the people following me. Uh, I only had two questions. One, uh, I was asked, what's the current status of uh, the deer hunting? Uh, with the school now in session, everyone knows where the kids are. Uh, did that kind of fall through? Nobody was interested. Is uh, no property owners going to let you uh, allow hunting? Uh, but what happened with that? And the other is, what happened with the disc golf? We had that controversy about Centennial Park. Uh, it looked like they settled on Williams Park. And then it just kind of evaporated. Is that still a go, or did it die? So we might have to wait till somebody comes back. Thank you. John Gould. Yes, good evening. Uh, I'm John Gould, dairy farmer from the town of Pavilion. Uh, I'm here representing Upstate Niagara and Awaka Milk Products. I'm chairman of the board there. And uh, I'm specifically here to re in regards to the wastewater uh, situation we're having with the city. Uh, I, I want to, to give you a little background. Uh, Upstate Niagara is, uh, owns nine plants. We're experts in wastewater handling. We have uh, an excellent engineering team. We have excellent consultants. We have eight plants in this state, including OACA. We handle a couple billion pounds of milk every year. And uh, we're committed to sustainable wastewater handling in this community. And, we're, and we do that with more than words. We do it with action. We've, we're investing $6 million in a pre-treatment facility upgrade at OACA. It'll be online in, <coughs> in December. We, uh, we have uh, uh, continuously uh, uh, met all requirements with the DEC. We, we've, uh, we've uh, with regards to the city, we've paid any surcharges that were required. We've never been late on a bill. We employ 450 people here. We, we represent 300 dairy farmers that own these plants, and uh, we, uh, we, uh, I'm here tonight to propose that we sit down and come to a solution with regards to this wastewater problem, a collaborative solution. No stonewalling. Us, the city, and DEC sit down and visit about it. We need a win-win a, a situation here. We're committed to this city, and we expect you're committed to us. And uh, uh, the current situation is tough. In uh, August, uh, the city requested that we uh, restrict flows greatly so that they could fix their aeration system and their lagoons. The result of that was 14-day uh, uh, shutdown of OACA's discharge. We had to haul. Uh, effluent away from the or wastewater away from the plant at a cost of half a million dollars for OACA. We paid overtime for the employees so that we could cut that time from 14 to 11 days. But that was our commitment in August. In September, we were called in, and and uh, uh, again we're we're on a restricted level of uh, discharge to the city, 
and uh, it's costing us between twenty and fifty thousand dollars a day every day. We don't take Sunday off, and uh, at the at the current rate, uh, we'll easily be spending a million dollars hauling waste away from our plant. It used to be accepted by the city, no problem. Um, I am I am confident we can work together and come come up with a solution. But we got to sit down and talk. We've been stonewalled. We haven't had any good conversation. We need to sit down with the city and DEC. And, uh, and we don't have a problem with the DEC. We work with them all the time. Uh, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know how many businesses can stand these kind of costs, but we cannot. And uh, if, 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 the city continues on this path, uh, we're going to have to make drastic decisions. And I, I certainly don't want to have to furlough workers or, or reduce business. And I, I got I to gotta ask, you know, what's the city's vision of the future here? If, we, if this is the way you treat your best uh, and largest uh, business in the city, where, where are we going? How, how are you going to support? new business, how are you going to, what's the future look like to you folks? So I, uh, I encourage you to get together with us, let's sit down, let's figure this out, and uh, I look forward to your response. Thank you. Ronald Yance. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Ron Yance, 15 Otis Street. I'm mainly here because I've heard the people that I've had issues with were supposed to be here tonight, and they obviously have not shown up. But mainly I would to say that the efforts of the council and the police department seem to be making a difference on Otis Street. Uh, it's been quiet the last few weeks and months. Um, I would just like to say keep up the good work. Uh, hopefully things will stay the way they are. <laughs> And so, uh, well, thank you very much. A um, couple of things, Rachel. While you're out, questions on disc golf and the deer hunt. Do you, can you sh shed any light on that? Um, I can, and forgive me, I was overheated and I thought I was going to pass out. So <laughs> I took a little walk to try to cool off. Um, I know Bill is coming in to turn the air down for us all. So pardon me for that. Um, disc golf, we haven't heard back from uh, the gentleman who was looking to propose a disc golf course and was uh, subsequently looking at Williams Park. Um, so if we do, we'll certainly get back to you on that. And for the, um, um, the program, um, we were able to obtain the extra permits this year. I'm, I'm searching my brain for the name of them. Thank you, dear management permits. Um, but we weren't able to enlist any landowners, especially in the first war, to be part of um, the process with us at this time. So we're going to continue to work through that. We do have some city lands that are eligible to be hunt at this time and some candidates that would like to utilize uh, that program. So unfortunately, where we most of the complaints we have in the first, second, and third ward, um, especially about shrubbery and bushes, we don't have anyone at this point willing to allow the hunting program um, on their lands. But like I said, we'll continue to work on it. I'd remind all residents that they want to protect their shrubs as winter comes along. I know it's 70 degrees today. That's why the room was so hot. But we um, have multiple sources of information on our website for those residents. If they'd like to look that up on different ways, they can deter deer in their lawns. So. Any response from council? Maybe do it on city property and get it started and show that it can so. be done. And maybe I once think it's the program a good first step and it's moving forward and there will be um, the ability to move the program forward. I think the members of the committee that got it moving in the first place really uh, did a service to the city to um, get the program up and running and the police department has taken, taken off with it under the leadership of uh, Assistant Chief Camp. 
So Great. kudos to Sean and yeah, Chris. Maybe get it started on city property and show that it can be done and others might join in, other landowners might join in. George, did you want to address the other complaint? Yeah, um, Council President, members of Council, if I might respond to OACA's concerns relative to the status of the wastewater treatment plant. A um, bit of a history relative to what the city has gone through over the last several months. Obviously, Council has been involved with approving funding for the air header uh, replacement project that was undertaken this year in advance of when it was previously planned to be performed. That was slated to be done over the course of the summer, completed in July. Due to some supply chain issues, it was not able to be completed until late August. Um, the is issue has been well on the radar screen of city, city management, obviously council as members of the public have raised concerns about the odors. Uh, those complaints have been made to the city, they've made to EPA, they've made to DEC. So the city has worked very closely with its engineers, with its in-house staff, with its operator to address replacement of the air header system at the pond so that the ponds and the wastewater treatment plant function properly for the community. As part of that process, um, the DO levels in the ponds were decreasing as the air headers were um, not working as, to the best of their ability and as they degraded. At the same time, it appears from the data that the city's reviewed, there were high BOD loadings issued to the wastewater treatment plant from OACA, which created a situation which depressed the dissolved oxygen levels that need to be in the ponds for them to function properly. That is pond A1, A2, and A3. During the course of the summer, as the project was ongoing, be performed by the contractors and overseen by the engineers, the city had asked OACA to cease discharging for uh, up to a couple weeks while the one pond was taken out of service and the air header was replaced, but ultimately to roll back on slowly so that the ponds and the deal recovery could, could take place when the air header system was ultimately turned back on and turned on to maximum ability. Um, unfortunately, from the data we've looked at, that doesn't appear to have been the case. OACA has what's called a sewer industrial discharge permit issued by the City of Batavia pursuant to Section 147 of the City Code. There are many industrial dischargers. Pursuant to the permit, there are permit levels that limit the discharge of certain contaminants or certain parameters of the waste, in particular BOD and TSS, total solids, to 300 milligrams per liter. What we've seen from looking at the data both over the course of 2021 and over the last few weeks and months is that the BOD and the TSS discharges from OACA to the city wastewater treatment plant were well in excess of those permitted levels. So as a consequence of that, as the pond project was completed or the air header project was completed in late August and the time for recovery for the ponds, the 30 acre ponds needed to take place, they simply did not recover very fast they were well below the 2.0 threshold for dissolved oxygen that, that needs to be in place. And as a consequence of that, in, in late September, around September 22nd, the City of Batavia received a notice of violation from the DEC indicating that the DEC was looking at enforcement action relative to the city through its speedies permit for the plant, for the discharges from the plant, because the dissolved oxygen levels were so low and they were not going to allow the ponds to function properly pursuant to the speedies permit. There were numerous conversations internally with the, the wastewater staff, with operators, with the city's external engineering firm and management about what the steps were, what the processes were. There were communications with DEC relative to that notice of violation. The notice of violation, so everyone understands, is a precursor to a potential order on consent from DEC or EPA. The order on consent would carry with it penalties, compliance schedules, and the penalties are significant. They could be $30,000 per day per violation for an owner of a plant that's in violation. So as a consequence of that, the city, looking at available options, looking at the low DO levels that were in existence in the ponds, issued a cease and desist letter to OACA uh, approximately four, four or five days later, indicating that OACA should cease discharges uh, to the extent possible and ultimately to the, completely to the plant so that the dissolved oxygen levels can rebound. That has forced OACA to get back to a point where they are trucking a lot of waste from their plant. Um, we've heard that's 150,000 gallons a day. There's an additional amount that's still being discharged to the plant. City staff and the engineers are monitoring the levels, DO levels in the ponds, the discharge levels from OACA daily, sometimes twice a day. 
right now the ponds have still not recovered. The DO levels are, are climbing somewhat, but they are not back to where they need to be from an engineering standpoint for the city's engineers to be comfortable with the circumstance to say that the ponds have recovered. We've been in co close communication with DEC management in Region 8. Uh, the city manager and staff and engineers and myself were on calls with DEC Region 8, uh, including all their program staff, their council, the regional director, to advise the steps that were being taken, to indicate what the city was doing to address the issue, and to tell them we we're working closely with our engineers to address it to the satisfaction of DEC, as well as to make sure that the city's asset and facility operated properly after the airheader project. Um, there's been a suggestion from various quarters that there has not been communication. I've been in communication with the attorney for OACA in the last 24 hours on two occasions. The technical staff for the city has been in communication with OACA's technical staff and engineers on several instances. Part of the issue is OACA and the engineers keep suggesting that there are alternatives available for the city's ponds, for the wastewater treatment program at the city's ponds to recover more quickly. One of the initial suggestions was additional air pumps at the ponds, portable air pumps. Now, while additional oxygen is being pumped in by the existing permanent pumps, it's possible that if there were mobile pumps available and you could source them and get them and provide the generators for them, that maybe that would be beneficial if it was agreed to by the city's engineers. The problem with that is that those pumps are not available. To this day, two and a half, three weeks after this issue arose, we have not heard of any of these pumps being available, any of these pumps being located in the Northeast. So that solution is not something that can be implemented at this time. It's just simply not available in the timeline that we need to act on to allow the DO levels in the ponds to recover. There are a couple other solutions that have been suggested as well. Um, we've considered those, we've looked at those, and, and certainly the city and the engineers and the internal staff are, are open to other ideas if it will from an engineering standpoint, be sound engineering science and benefit the wastewater treatment plant and the DO level. At this point, we don't see anything that's currently available and implementable on the timeline that these ponds need to recover on that will, in fact, meet those requirements. So, unquestionably, this is a very difficult situation for OACA. It's an expensive situation for OACA. But I would point out, the city acted with haste during the spring and summer to arrange funding for this, the air header replacement program as quickly as possible and have that project fast-tracked and performed as quickly as possible. The city learned that OACA's pretreatment program was going to be upgraded by letter in March of this year. That pretreatment program is still not going to be online until December of this year. So with all due respect, you know, it's a major industrial user of the city's wastewater treatment plant, but there are obligations for pretreatment as part of that process. And having a pretreatment plant that can meet the capabilities of a production plant is one of those elements. And ultimately, it's the city's plant. It's the city's speedies permit. It's the city and the taxpayers that are at risk if DEC issues an order on consent with violations because the plant does not operate properly because of the DO levels. So from that standpoint, as a general overview, the city is doing and continues to do everything we possibly can. I can't tell you how many meetings, calls, conferences the city manager and I have had, engineers have had, as recently as 15 minutes before this meeting, including with the engineers. So there is constant communication. There's communication amongst us as well as OACA technical staff. But the fact that it's expensive to an industrial user of a SOAR discharge permit does not alleviate the city's responsibility to comply with its speedies obligations or DEC's requirements and regulations. So that's what we're working to do, and we'll keep council apprised and, and work as expeditiously as we can to do that. George, once the city ponds get back to their normal status, uh, there should be no concern at that point for us to be able to handle OADCA's level of discharge that they are allowed uh, according to the agreement. A am I safe in saying that once, once the ponds are back up to, to normal operating status? Yeah, as soon as they are back up to operating status and the pretreatment system is online to pretreat those wastewater discharges to the permitted levels of 300 milligrams per liter, presumably according to the operator, engineer, and wastewater staff, that would be acceptable. So my concern would be then if OAD is saying that their pretreatment um, facility won't be up to grade until December, uh, let's say just for uh, 
for discussion purposes that the ponds within a, a month's time the ponds are up and running so November our ponds are up and running but their pretreatment plant isn't up and running yet is are we facing more problems there are we going to need to restrict them because of that the city has a permit the city has a plant the city has discharge limits to its speedies permit we're at a situation because of the air header issue and because of the high BOD loadings that those ponds need to recover. So I'm not going to look a week out, two weeks out, three weeks out, other than to say the permit spells out the permitted discharge levels. The city needs to recover the ponds. Until we can recover the ponds to the DO levels that are necessary to operate properly and to the satisfaction of the engineers and operator, we can't allow discharges anywhere near the, the permitted level. Uh, yeah, is there one person at the uh, sewage treatment plant that puts his name on the uh, permits and all that? Is it, a, is it a single person that signs everything? Well, there's an operator for the plant. There's a certified operator pursuant to the DEC's wastewater regs. Okay, and that's, he personally signs everything? Ultimately, for record-keeping purposes, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead, resume. George. Why is it that they couldn't get a pump for the oxygen for the ponds? It's not available in the supply chain, Councilperson Christian. Me? It's not available in the supply chain. Wow. Um, and they are hauling it away now? They're hauling some of it, yes. Right. Now, being that some of it's in my ward, I really would hate to see 300 farmers hurt throughout this county. I would hate to see a loss of 450 jobs. But we have to do what we have to do. And I hope their sewer plant is going to be operating and running in December. And we should be able to do something here, no doubt. We have to think of our taxpayers, too. Oh, yeah. Because you said it's going, it could, it's going to be costly to the city. It could be costly to the city, let me put it that way. Yes. That's what I'm concerned about. Anything else, George, you wanted to? No. This no. could have been avoided if we stuck with the permitted level and there's no discharge. I'd rather not get in speculation. Respectfully, council member, we're, we're dealing with the situation that we have in front of us. Um, all I can tell you is, as members of the council and the public, we are doing everything we possibly can as professional staff, management staff, and engineering staff for the city. Um, and it's, it's not lost on anyone involved in this process in terms of what the financial impact is. But the fact of the matter is the city has the plant, the asset, and the permit with DEC. So we've got to be cognizant of what the requirements are for that. And we've got to get the pond to the point where they're operating properly for everyone's benefit. If they are paying a surcharge of 50000 a day, something like that, where is that money going? Doesn't it go to the city? That's the reference to trucking. trucking yeah, that's reference to trucking. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, the number varied, but 25 to 30, 38, somewhere in there maybe. Thank you. Rachel, uh, how is this affecting our central pump station right here on Main Street? Didn't, wasn't there an issue with that as well from odors or something? Um, so right now, it is my understanding from daily testing that AWACA is around their permitted levels um, within 100 either way, up or down, um, since we issued the cease and desist order. Um, we have not had what... Um, very high strength waste coming through the system since that time that I am aware of. And the smells at the central pump station have not been strong. Um, sometimes it is my opinion, and I'm not an engineer, that when there's high strength waste coming through the system from an industrial user, um, that our central pump sp station can have an odor to it. That has not been the case and I will give Awaka all the credit for all the effort you are taking in this very difficult time to haul your waste and get closer to your permitted level. So thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay. Any unfinished business? I just, oh. I just sent under public comments. I wanted to thank Mr. Yancey. It's very seldom that someone comes in and says, hey, things are going pretty good for a change. Yeah. 
Yeah. Normally, people come in and accuse us of things. And it's, oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> you made my night. And hopefully that didn't jinx everything. <laughs> um, yes, go ahead. Just under unfinished business, um, just a, a comment here. Um, I was the one that uh, had complaints from some various people around the uh, new Vendetta Stadium about the parking issue there along that curb because of visibility. And the last two Fridays I brought my son to the football game and I was in that parking lot and those parking, no parking signs might as well, might as well come down because nobody's even looking at it. Uh, I tried to get out of that parking lot, almost got hit twice last Friday night. Um, nobody's even paying attention to signs, so if we're not going to enforce them, we should just take them down um, and, and let it be what it is. But um, nobody is, that's two Fridays in a row that, now I know this last Friday was a big, you know, HFL coming in. They had a bus of 3,000 people from their own school. Stadium was packed. I get that, but there's, I mean, you can't park cars in the middle of the street because there's no car parking. So if there's no parking sign there, I would appreciate people observing it and respecting it and I would encourage our police department on Friday nights to get down there and, and enforce that because somebody's gonna somebody's gonna get in a car accident sooner or later. That was the whole pro the whole purpose for putting those no, no parking signs up and they're just ignoring them. So I think it's either time to enforce it or just take the signs down and let it be what it is. Um, so I just wanted to make the police department aware of that fact that uh, that it's still a very dangerous situation with the with no respect for those signs. Uh, under, if this is not unfinished business, Gino, and I'm not sure where to put this in the, in the agenda, um, but I did get a call from a concerned resident um, on, I want to say, it's not, it's not Lewis, I mean, it's Lewis, or one of those small streets off of State Street there, and, and um, she was very, very concerned about her children um, because they're playing, you know, in the street and around the, the, the street there. It's, if you're familiar with that area, it's almost like a dead end back in there. Mm -hmm. um, but the people that are going through there, she said, are, are, the cars are coming through there very quickly. And she's very concerned that somebody's going to get hurt, a kid's going to get hurt, or somebody's going to get hurt there. And she was curious as to what we might be able to do as a city, uh, whether there might be able to uh, maybe get speed bumps in there or something like that to slow the traffic down. So I'm just, I'm bringing that up right now um, for maybe the city manager to uh, work with, uh, with our police department and our Department of Public Works and see if there's maybe monitor that situation sometime, somehow or, or, or figure out a, a solution to that problem. So I'm just, I'm doing that uh, on behalf of one of my constituents. Sure, we'll look into it. You got that, the, the ball field, or the uh, stadium and the uh, Lewis and Hutchins? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to Anything else? Okay. Resolution 68 2021, Mr. Canale, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution transferring fund, funds from assigned fund balance to various reserve funds. Seconded by Mr. Bealey. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Carras? Yes. Bykowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Casino? Yes. Okay, resolution 69 2021. Mr. McGinnis, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to establish and update current capital projects and transfer funds for capital project budgets. Seconded by Mr. Kraft. Any questions or concerns? I have a question, Mr. President. Uh, just for my own education. Why does it cost three hundred forty thousand dollars to abandon a water line? Says Richmond Avenue water main abandonment. Abandonment. It's got a three-year timetable and it's three hundred forty thousand four hundred dollars. Rachel, Come on up, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Not bringing your coffee? No, I'm not bringing the coffee. It's a big one. Yeah, want some? No. Um, the answer to that question, it's more than just a simple abandonment. It's abandonment of a six inch line and transferring all the services over to a 12 inch. So that's where the majority of the work is, is bringing the services across the street and tying them into another main. Okay. And there's some other modifications adjacent to it on the side streets. 
but the significantly okay, so this, this includes hooking into the new line, all the hookups and everything to go up. Okay. You have an existing 12 and an existing 6. You're going to say goodbye to the 6. Sorry, Bob, that was previously approved with the budget, so I'm like, what? Richmond? Is That's an old one. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Councilperson McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Perez? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. And resolution 70 2021, Mr. McGinnis, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution of the City Council of the City of Batavia authorizing wastewater system headworks and capacity analysis and financial planning engineering services agreement and use of the American Rescue Plan um, APARPCPA funds. Seconded by Ms. Briggs. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Councilperson McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Perez? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Vecino? Yes. Canale? Yes. Resolution 71, 2021, Mr. Bajkowski, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution of the City Council of the City of Batavia authorizing a professional engineering services proposal for water system planning assistance and use of the ARPA funds. Seconded by Mr. Bailey. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Neely? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Carras? Yes. Okay. Resolution 72, 2021. Mr. Veely, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to purchase a mainline sewer camera and use wastewater reserves. Seconded by Ms. Pacino. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Veely? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Carraz? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Resolution 73, 2021. Ms. Pacino, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to purchase new water meter reading equipment. Seconded by Mr. McGinnis. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Carras? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Resolution 74 2021. Ms. Briggs, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to authorize use of reserves to fund repairs of compressor at City Ice Rink. Seconded by Mr. Veely. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Carras? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Resolution 75, 2021. Mr. Carras, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to authorize the city manager to make street light changes with National Grid. Seconded by Ms. Christian. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Carraz? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Resolution 76, 2021. Mr. Bajakowski, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution authorizing the adoption of a fund balance policy for the City of Batavia, New York. Seconded by Mr. Canale. Any questions or concern? Call the roll, please. Council Member Bajakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Casino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Carras? Yes. 
And resolution 77, 2021, Mr. Veeley, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to accept the Northern Border Regional Commission NBRC grant to authorize the Council President to execute the grant agreement and the City Manager to utilize the water reserve funds as a local match to the grant. Seconded by Mr. Kress. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Veeley? Yes. Pacino? Yes. Canelli? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Perez? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. And if you would take us into executive session, please. Where is Article 7, Section 1051F of the Public Officers Law? Permits the legislative body of municipality to enter into executive session to discuss the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation, or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. And where is Article 7, Section 105.1D of the Public Officers Law, permits the legislative body of a municipality to enter into executive session to discuss proposed pending or current litigation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Batavia that upon approval of this motion, the City Council does hereby enter into executive session. Seconded by Mr. Veeley. Call the roll, please. Council Member Casino? Yes. Canelli? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Perez? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Veeley? Yes. 